finish uh, our treatment of error correction codes, uh, um, and then we will move to auctions. Um, so let me just briefly uh, remind you if you have, first of all, we operate not on uh, real uh, numbers or integer or integers or complex numbers, but we <coughs> operate on a finite field and uh, every finite field is uh, of the form p to the power k many elements. It has p to the k many elements and it's in fact are uh, uniquely determined for every p and every k there exists uh, exactly one finite field with that many elements and it's called uh, uh, Galois field right because it's unique you can name it uh, and in practice p is usually taken to be 2 and k is taken to be 8 because then uh, every element of the field uh, is just one byte right uh, and the operations of addition and multiplication in a field are stored uh, uh, in a table, right? So we use lookup table when we manipulate polynomials over this field. Uh, now, for uh, our purpose, uh, just for simplicity, we will actually work with uh, a field uh, uh, ZP, right? Uh, with the only reason is that in ZP we can just take really integers from 0 to p minus 1 and just use a, a multiplication and addition modulo, modulo p as the operations. Everything that uh, we say about the error correction codes uh, um, that we will be discussing applies equally to this uh, type of fields but this is much easier uh, to, to talk about, right? Because we know exactly uh, what the elements are and how they add and how they multiply simply by modding the product and the sum by p. Okay, so what is the idea of uh, <coughs> error correction codes? We assume that we have uh, um, elements a1, a2, a3 up to uh, AM that all belong to the field. In this case, it will be just ZP. <coughs> and that you want to transmit. Uh, but uh, rather than transmitting these elements to give the transmission error robustness, we actually form a pop. So let's do it uh, A0 up to a m minus 1. It's a little bit convenient. When we now form a polynomial, we consider polynomial p of x that is just a0 plus a1x plus a2x squared plus all the way to a m minus 1 uh, x to the m minus 1, right? And uh, we want uh, our system to have tolerance uh, uh, E. So we want the system to be able uh, uh, to correct uh, to correct um, up to I don't know who chooses the markers for the school uh, uh, up to uh, to e many errors, uh, and uh, we will, <coughs> uh, of course, m will be chosen so that uh, um, the number n, which is equal m uh, plus two e is smaller than p so that uh, uh, we can have enough space uh, for uh, um, 
to express any kind of sequence of length m and also allowing e many errors. So, um, in practice, uh, n is usually uh, 200 symbols and uh, um, e is uh, 28 uh, symbols, uh, sorry, m is 200 symbols and then n is equal to um, uh, equal to uh, 256, which is the size, uh, or oh, oh, no, sorry, here it's uh, actually it's really small because it, it goes from 0 to p minus 1. Because this is just one byte that we have on our disposal. Of course, what the, if uh, the channel is not very noisy, you can pro reduce E to say 14 um, and uh, then increase uh, uh, this, uh, uh, this number M accordingly so that uh, M plus uh, 2E adds up to 256. Uh, and instead of, uh, as I mentioned, instead of sending these numbers, we send uh, numbers uh, P of 1, uh, sorry, P of 0, uh, P of 1, <coughs> all the way uh, up to, um, up to, I guess it will be P of n minus 1, uh, because this is n values. And so assume now, that um, the received values are P0, B1, up to Bn minus 1, and uh, at most uh, E many values satisfy that uh, uh, P of, uh, say, some J is, uh, in fact, different from the receiving symbol uh, BJ, yeah? right? So um, there are at most E many errors. So the idea is simply, instead of sending the coefficients of the polynomial, you send uh, values of the polynomial because they have a, a very kind of tight uh, redundancy, right? Um, uh, so, what do we, uh, did we see then uh, last time? Uh, we proved the following... Uh, Just a question. Yes. So, you're sending values in ZP. So, yes. the, if, if you've chosen P to be 8, each of those values is 8 bits. Uh, okay, no, no. So this is, uh, sorry, I was uh, being confusing here. Uh, this is what you do in practice, uh, right? Here, uh, we will actually use ZP as the field uh, over which we will evaluate polynomials. Uh, simply because uh, working in uh, G2 to the 8 uh, or G256 uh, uh, is kind of awkward because uh, it's not, you know, the addition and multiplication, you remember, are done by forming polynomials and modding out the product with an irreducible polynomial over this field. So that's complicated. So, but everything that I say, uh, so instead of working on G, uh, instead of uh, G256, uh, right, this is, uh, sorry, GF, uh, this is GF2 to the 8. We will work in the, uh, some field uh, Z, ZP, where P is sufficiently large for our arguments here. Right? So we are sending, so these guys, A0 up to A n minus 1, you can think of them as being integers, right? Yes, yeah, so they're in the field. So yes. the, va the values of the polynomial are also in the field. Yes. But if you're sending n minus 1 values, mm -hmm. and each value is, say, one byte long, 
no, 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 no. It's not uh, one byte long. Uh, uh, it's uh, each value. Just ignore it. Use it. Uh, don't think of binary. Somehow you have in your alphabet uh, altogether uh, symbols zero to p minus one. P, p, p minus one yeah. symbols. Yes. Yeah. How they are encoded. Uh, uh, we don't go into this. Uh, somehow assume that your input or your telecommunication system takes uh, uh, 0 to p minus 1 as possible inputs. Uh, how it encodes them, maybe it turns them in binary or uh, uh, whatever, right? So we will just assume that uh, these numbers are kind of single points, right? And they are either received correctly or received incorrectly. So the receive system can also read out uh, the uh, values that are all between 0 and p minus 1. Uh, and some of them may be erratic. Uh. OK. Yeah, so no bytes uh, here at the moment. OK, so uh, what do we do uh, now? Uh, we prove the following theorem. Um, uh, uh, so if uh, there are at most uh, e errors, uh, then uh, there exist polynomials uh, the Q of X and E of X such that uh, uh, degree of uh, uh, Q of X is smaller or equal than uh, M minus 1 plus E and uh, uh, degree of Q of X is uh, uh, smaller or equal than E. Right? Uh, how do we show? So we are saying simply there exists such two polynomials. At the moment, we, we don't give a clue how they are actually obtained. So to show the existence is very simple. Uh, proof. Alex, yes. Is the second degree supposed to be degree E of X? Because you have two degrees. Oh, 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 oh. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much, E of X. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so far two people are following. We are making a progress. Please stop me if I'm doing something that you don't understand. Okay, proof. Uh, simply take E um, of X uh, polynomial uh, product over all J's such that uh, P of J is not equal to P of J. So these are all j's in which error occurs. And just uh, do x minus j, right? So this polynomial will be our e of x. And clearly, because there are at most j many places in which the error has occurred, this will be of degree at most e. Right? And uh, uh, just a uh, question with your theorem. Yes. You said there exist polynomials Q and E, but yes. you haven't actually put any conditions on Q and E. Like like oh. I could just give I could just give you any two polynomials okay. Q okay. and E. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. I uh, didn't have enough coffee this morning. As a friend of mine says, I have too much blood in my caffeine system. So obviously I'm still uh, I still don't know what I am talking about. And a degree E less than E such that 
uh, for uh, for all uh, i in the field right between zero and p, or actually we can put here for all i between zero and n, which is right um, n plus e, uh, we have a cube of i is uh, uh, equal to b uh, i times e of i. Right, so we have this. What does this say? Uh, well, let's first define the polynomials and then we will see. Uh, and uh, uh, let also uh, Q of X simply uh, be P of X times E of X as defined here. So idea is, uh, you remember uh, when you, uh, when we started talking about these things, uh, the idea was that uh, uh, if you have uh, altogether m plus 2e many values, right? If you have m plus 2e many values, and at most e of them are erratic, right, then m plus e values uh, will be correct, and then we, we say that uh, if you take any m plus e many values that sit on the same polynomial, right, uh, because at most e can be uh, uh, wrong, then a p uh, will uh, coincide with uh, this polynomial at m many points and will force it to be equal. But we in fact have m plus e many values that sit on the same polynomial. So that's precisely what allows this step, right? Because these guys of degree e, so we can push, instead of using p, we can use a polynomial q of precisely degree e larger. Why do we do that? The purpose, the sole purpose of E of X is to mask the errors, right? Um, um, so why is uh, this true? Well, very simply, if uh, E of X is equal to uh, uh, zero, then clearly this product is also equal to zero, so this holds because both sides are zero. If uh, E is uh, not such that E of X is equal to uh, zero, uh, then what do we have? Uh, e of X is always zero on errors, so P of X for all of these values, P of X must in fact be equal to PI. So again, uh, we have that uh, this product is precisely equal to the value of uh, Q, right? Uh, so now we are just one step away to um, construct an efficient decoding of our error correction code. Uh, what is the, uh, the uh, idea? Uh, well, we will show, uh, so uh, we show that for any pair of polynomials uh, Q and E satisfying uh, satisfying this equality Q of X divided by E of X is precisely equal to P of X. So if we find any two polynomials uh, Q and E that satisfy this property, 
their quotient must be a polynomial. Uh, so Q will be, in fact, divisible by E, and the uh, quotient is precisely P of X. Why can there be uh, more than one uh, pair of polynomials? Well, you see, we say that there can be at most E errors, uh, but there could be less than E errors. Uh, so if uh, there are fewer than E errors, I can screen out all errors, but I can also screen out uh, a few correct places, right? So uh, just uh, uh, this E of X will have some superfluous zeros, right? Um, and so we will have different pairs of Q and E, but the situation is such that the ratio of these any two polynomials in fact, uh, has to be polynomial P of X. So if we find one single pair of Q and E, right? If we find one pair of uh, Q and E that satisfy this property, we'll, we'll be home because we can just divide them and read out what P is and see what its coefficients are. Now, what's the reason for that? Uh, so we want to now prove, so want to prove uh, oh, I dropped it already. Uh, so uh, let us uh, let us see how to prove that. Uh, so assume Q of X, Q of I is equal b i times e of i for all um, zero smaller or equal than i smaller than n. Right? Now, I'm going to give you an argument that is slightly different than one in the notes just for you to kind of you can compare at home the two arguments, but they boil out, boil down to the same thing, right? And so, what we can say, since um, E of I is of degree at most, um, at most E, uh, it can have at most um, e many zeros. Uh, right? Now note, uh, note that uh, since uh, Q of I is equal B I times E of I. Uh, whenever E of I is equal to zero, also Q of I equals to zero. Now, it's simple fact of uh, polynomials and algebra that uh, if a polynomial is zero for all the zeros of another polynomial, then this polynomial is divisible by the first polynomial. Just factor this uh, right polynomial Q of i can be written as the leading coefficient uh, times x minus 0, uh, 1, and so forth, uh, x, x minus 0, um, uh, e, right? Uh, so, and the other polynomial, since it's zero, will also have these zeros, so you have that they are divisible. So, um, thus, uh, Q of I is of the form S of I times E of I, right, where uh, S is um, of degree um, 
uh, what did we have? n minus 1 plus e. Or at most, n minus 1 plus e. Right? Because this guy is of at most degree e, and this guy is uh, q of i. Uh, is of uh, degree um, uh, n plus 2 e. OK, so now. Uh, um, just a question. Yes. So you said so q of i equals b i e i. That's not that's not the same thing as saying q of x is equal to b i times. Or well, it doesn't make sense to put it that way. But like you said, so like when two polynomials agree on the roots, one divides the other. Mm -hmm. But here you haven't necessarily got them agreeing on all the roots of e because some of the roots of e may not correspond to the i's between 0 and n. So e doesn't necessarily divide q. So e is, uh, let me see, so you are saying that um, uh, e, so because the, they are always equal, uh, so this is always true, right? Well, for integers i between 0, zero and, and n, n minus 1. Oh, I see. But, so, but the roots of e may not be integers. Yeah, yeah, OK. So let's take that, in fact, uh, uh, n that uh, we take maximal possible. Uh, so we do this uh, uh, for, uh, uh, so we take that n is, in fact, uh, p. So if this holds for all between 0 and n, very good. I mean, you are really uh, alert. So uh, in, in fact, let's take uh, that uh, uh, n plus 2e is uh, precisely equal to uh, p. So all then integers, so this then exhausts all the integers, that all the elements of the field. Huh? Okay, okay that's so now, so because the roots can only be elements of the field. Exactly. So, okay, they're equal on all the Yeah, very good, yeah. very good. So, in fact, uh, for this, maybe the, the other argument that is in the notes doesn't require the 10 equals to p, but uh, you notice correctly that this one, in fact, does. Uh, very good, very good. Uh, so, so we assume that n is equal to p here, so it's maximal capacity. Um, and now, uh, now what do we have? We have that uh, that uh, uh, that s i times e i is equal to b i times e i. Uh, for all i in Zp, right? Uh, and now, uh, what can we conclude? Whenever ei is not equal to zero, we can cancel left and right side, right? So for all i such that e of i is not equal to zero, uh, we have s of i is equal to a b of i. And uh, how many, because e of i happens at most e many times, so this will be true uh, for um, m minus 1 plus e many values. But now notice, uh, um, out of these n minus 1 plus e values, uh, at most e values can be wrong, uh, right? So we will have, in fact, uh, so since, uh, since uh, 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 p of i is equal to b of i, for at least um, uh, how many um, uh, m 
plus E many values, what do we have? Uh, we have, um, uh, sorry, this is actually true for this many values. Uh, it's degree n minus 1, but this many values, right? So what does it mean? Since at most E many values can be wrong, uh, so thus uh, P of I is equal to S of I for at least M many values, uh, right? Because uh, the number of points, right, this is uh, equal to B I for at least M plus E many values and uh, this can be not equal to P of I for at most uh, E many values so this leaves you at least M values when P of I and S of I are equal but they are of the same degree namely uh, degree N minus 1 and equal at that many values, does this have to coincide? Right? So the trick was really to push up, you see, the redundancy that we actually have m plus e correct values that lie on the same polynomial allows us to push the degree of p by multiplying it by this uh, error blocking, uh, error screening out uh, uh, polynomial, right? And uh, lo and behold, uh, um, we get uh, our theorem that um, this quotient precisely must be equal to P of X. And now just the very last step. How do we get Q of X and E of X? Oh, Alex? Yes. So you said the polynomial S is equal to B on M plus E many values. Yes. Um, and out of this M plus E many values, PI is not equal to BI at the most E many values. Yeah. So what, what if you have, say, so you've got M plus E values and then say SI is not equal to, uh, sorry, BI is not equal to PI on the... Um, like if, if the error is uh, the first E in S and then say E plus 1 to E plus 2E in P, then the errors aren't matching up. But uh, still, this is actually, this guy matches not on M many values, but uh, this guy, uh, so this, uh, this equality, where is it, which equality, this equality, is true at m plus e many values, right? And out of these values, uh, at most e values are different to p. So the remainder values must match p of i is equal to s of i. Because this is actually true for m plus e many values, and uh, uh, P can be different, so this is, there is, cannot be mismatch. Only P can be off, uh, but it can be off at E many values, so you are left with M many values that are, uh, that are uh, S of I is equal to P of I. Uh. Maybe I should have given you the proof that is in the notes, because I thought that this one is kind of, more intuitive, but maybe I was I think, I think the, 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 the next line you've written makes it a bit more confusing. Like what you just said makes more sense. Like you said SI equals BI for M plus E many values. Okay. And then What's that there's at, at, most, at most E of those... Yes. At most E of those BI could uh, be not, are not equal to the corresponding PI. Exactly right. For M plus A many values, Uh, and among such bi at most 
E values are not equal to BI, oh, sorry, are not equal to BI, thus uh, SI is equal to PI on, at least M. on a remaining M values, but degree of S of I, but uh, uh, degree of S of I equals degree of P of I equals M minus 1, thus you get um, that they, uh, so this implies P of X must coincide with S of X. Reading the notes of another way, I actually came up with this uh, just uh, uh, this morning, and I thought, oh, this is kind of easier to see than the, but it might not be, might not be. Um, and it just kind of emphasizes the redundancy, you know, that we are utilizing uh, the fact that when you find a polynomial that fits, it fits not at m, but m plus e many values. How do we get uh, polynomial p? Polynomial p uh, uh, is obtained as ratio of any q and e satisfying this property. And now, uh, so to get a pair uh, q of x, e of x, satisfying um, satisfying uh, uh, Q of I equals B of I times E of I for all uh, I between 0 and P. Um, simply write uh, Q of I and E of I in the coefficient form so you will have that q of x is equal small q 